Today is Wednesday, June 14th, heading up to uh, South Dakota, the Black Hills at Sturgis, uh, the Buffalo Chip. Going to do the Redzilla uh, Adventure Fest. And uh, so I hit Vernon, heading north. It's about 94 degrees. I wetted my LD Comfort shirt down, closed my vents and my jacket. Completely comfortable. So taking the back roads. Stopped at McDonald's north of I-40, Sarah, Oklahoma, I think. Yeah, double cheeseburger, small Coke. And uh, getting ready. I'm about 170 miles from Liberal, Kansas. I got an Airbnb for tonight. Check this out. They're just on a beautiful motorcycle. Yeah, loving it. It's Thursday, July 15th. Had a good camp out at the Airbnb. And uh, really nice little room, good people. So today I'm headed to Sturgis, South Dakota for the adventure rally at the Buffalo Chip through Redzilla. And if you ever wondered if, if auxiliary lights make a difference or not, check this out. That's auxiliary lights, Baja design squadrons without. Yeah, with, without. Night and day difference. And I even got my high beams on. About 9.45, I think I've covered close to 200 miles so far. Just got gas in Trenton, Nebraska, and heading to Alliance. I got a buddy over in Colorado. He texted me yesterday, said, hey, I might hook up with you. They're trying to do the Colorado BDR, and it's getting a lot of rain, so it makes the roads quite muddy, so he may come over here, spend a couple of days, and go back to Colorado. And uh, so, yeah, temperature's about 70 degrees, no rain on the radar, winds are light. So, uh, just a perfect day to ride a motorcycle across the country, especially through the uh, Great Plains. Just beautiful out here. Love it. I'm about uh, eight miles east of Ogallala. And uh, I love Google Maps. It gives me routes that I'd never find my, on my own. And it gave me three choices, and I chose the skinny road choice. And this is just a treat uh, up here in the middle of Nebraska. Got no rain on the radar. 73 degrees, just perfect. A little skinny country road and I'm going to turn back left up here in about a mile and a half to go around Keystone Lake or Keystone Lake Road and but yeah I've been up here probably 20 times and I've never known about this road and randomly Google Maps just uh, put it in my route so I think it knows me quite well pretty awesome I'm about uh, two hours from Alliance. Riding through the sand hills of Nebraska. This is just Nirvana, motorcycle Nirvana. I uh, got my cruise set on 72, speed limit 65, light winds. It's 73, no, 76 degrees. Just one of my favorite parts of the ride is Sturgis. You can almost kind of close your eyes and imagine you're in Scotland. Just green and rolling hills. Just incredible. I've passed maybe 10 cars total in the last uh, 60 miles. So it's pretty incredible. You never get the chance to you ever get the chance to see the sand hills. It's highway eighty or sixty-one. 
out of Ogallala, you go to Keystone Lake, and you head, then you head north from there. Uh, just beautiful. And I'll be coming into Alliance from the east heading west instead of coming into the lines from the south. You never want to take that from the south because it's RV heavy and a bunch of traffic. Uh, I got some tacos and Alliance and uh, about eight miles south of Chadron, South Dakota. And it's kind of where the Black Hills start to develop on the southern portion. It gets prettier and prettier. I'm on 385. I'm about 80 miles from the Buffalo Chip, uh, entering the Black Hills of South Dakota. It's about 91 degrees, uh, low winds. It's a beautiful day. So I should be at the Buffalo Chip here in about an hour and a half or so. Well, I made it up here, coming to the Buffalo Chip on the back road. Dirt road about five miles to the chip. Weather is perfect. We're gonna check in and go down to the pizza ranch, get some uh, pizza and some fried chicken legs. Sounds pretty good. Is this the Africa Twin parking zone? This is it. You are in the right place. Awesome. I like living like that. to the Buffalo Chip for the Rosilla Rally. And uh, show you around. Well, there we got Russell and Clark from Tulsa, Oklahoma. 650 and 450. Not fine. Little hammock is set up here. Can see it around. This is 13 from Minnesota. It's his name, 13. And this is Jeremy from Minnesota. They sold 300 tickets, so we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. Well, we got the GPS tracks from Rever, who's at the rally, and right now we're doing the Silver City Loop. So we'll see what, supposed to have some dirt on it, so we'll see. So far, it's been pretty on the road. Well, we found a little dirt. See where this takes us to. Nice little gravelly road. Gotta be looking for a little side by sides coming around these corners. The temperature's probably about uh, 65 degrees. Uh, maybe 75, but it feels nice. This is uh, Bear Gulch road or Custer Custer Gulch Road pretty nice so the Revzilla ADV Fest is uh, I didn't know anybody coming up here so I met everybody here and uh, so we're out in open field porta potties and uh, we got water out there though so I mean you have to hike to the about 100 yards away to the water spigot. And they give us uh, three tickets for three breakfasts for today, tomorrow, and Sunday. But we waited in line for like an hour for breakfast. It's just a truck, with, I mean a trailer, or truck, food truck type deal. And uh, I don't think they were prepared for the people. Like I said, so it wasn't, the food was good, but uh, uh, process could stand to be improved and then so I'm waiting in line for breakfast though so it's not all bad so I meet these two guys behind me Marcus and Bud Marcus is from England lived here for since 1990 but he lives down in Phoenix and then Bud lives up by Tulsa Oklahoma so we started talking and both those guys are pretty new to adventure riding. And they have these trails listed as A, B, C, or D. And I think D is the easiest. I think this might be a C. And uh, through river. 
And this is really the first time I've used rubbers and it's working out pretty good. So, yeah, so that's the backstory. But anyway, so they have a campsite down by the pond at the buffalo chip that has trees. And I'm using my hammock stand out in the field, which is fine. But they're gonna let me share a campsite with them tonight, so I have some trees. Pretty cool. But yeah, but if I didn't have that hammock stand though, I would not have been sleeping in my hammock. Thank you. I would have been sleeping on the ground. Here we go. See what this got a little deterioration on it from water. tell where the water runs down these trails and starts to erode the trail a little bit. Then usually when you get closer to the top there's less erosion because there's less waterfall that poured across the road. So yeah this is nice. Really nice. Alright correction this is bare Gulch Road and then in about three miles we're going to turn on to Custer Gulch Road. It's really nice just uh, putting through the forest. Nice little gravel road. Very nice. Just crossed over Pactola Lake. You can see it's really a beautiful lake. I thought I was recording going across the dam, but I wasn't. But anyways, uh, yeah, using the uh, River app, first time I've used it, I've had it for years, first time I really used it to navigate, and they already put in a pre-planner app. But I like it pretty, yeah, it just takes a little learning curve. Uh, but uh, I mean, as far as quick routing though, I still use Copilot Co and Google Maps for my touring stuff. But yeah, but for specific routes, though, uh, so far it's working out pretty good. I like it. All right, just had the first little glitch using the river route. Uh, had me going across Pactola Lake and then told me to turn right on Custer Gulch Road, which right there where it told me to turn at, there was no road. And then I turned around, and, th and I remember passing Custer Gulch up here on the other side of the lake. So I turned around, and now it's rerouting me this way. So, I mean... Yeah, kind of, I don't know, maybe it, I don't know. Let's see how it does the rest of the day. Now you get a better shot of Pactola Lake. That water's a little chilly too. On Needles Highway, this is the slowest I've ever seen two 1290s go. This is definitely worse than Sturgis week because the cars go a lot slower than the motorcycles do, even though they get clogged up. But you look at motorcycles coming at you from the other direction the whole time like a parade. So, yeah, I like this better when it's during the rally week. A little detour around uh, Needles Highway, Iron Mountain Road. And then the other route, we're supposed to go on by Sheridan Lake. Well, the road's closed. There's no way around but to go Rapid City and back, so we abandoned that. So we're going to do Boniker Canyon. And uh, on the way back to Sturgis. And uh, we're going to do that via Nemo. So I'll get a little, little bit of dirt. This is a good dirt road, though. It's all well, well taken care of. And, one of those high speed dirt roads. But we got a monster storm. I don't know if you can see on the rate on the in the camera or not, but uh, we're actually going right up to the middle of it. So we'll see what kind of adventure this turns out to be. Last year at Sturgis, I brought my buddy down this road. He was on a Road King. And there's a, about five or six pack of Harleys. I guess they got lost on this road. So they were going down the road like 
you know, eight miles an hour. And then, uh, so I passed him, you know, no gestures or anything. The buddy on his road king, he passed him. And they all yelled at him and flipped him off. It's pretty funny. All right, got the boys behind me. Good. Well, the nice thing about the rain is we have Vonnegut Canyon Road all to ourselves. Everybody else went to the house. So this is, this is really good. Been, it's just been spitting on us a little bit. Overall, it's been a really good day. We did about 200 miles. I don't know, probably 30 miles of dirt. And um, so I'm going to move my hammock down uh to the trees i'm gonna move my hammock off this prairie and met some guys that they there rode with we're gonna camp down the trees down there by the pool so uh yeah i got some rain moving in all right down here in the trees look at that taj mahal yeah down here in the trees got some shade cover not up on the prairie yeah. much better these are my new camping compadres down here in the trees. There's Bud from Oklahoma, Marcus from Arizona. He's Hello. also half Bye, Mexican. He's also half Mexican <laughs> and English. And yeah, the third English. <laughs> Got a shower. Uh, the showers are clean, and I did a good job with those. Hot, clean, and uh, felt really good. It's the first time, and I think. Thursday, Friday, yeah, two days, had a shower, so, anyways, uh, really good, I'm gonna cook a steak here in a little bit. This is 13, he's on the witness protection program, so I gotta hide, I'm gonna have to blur his face out. Your tent, rooftop tent on top of it. Yeah. What kind, what, what is that on the back? So that's like, that's a dolly. So I hook up the front wheel and I take the bike anywhere. Really? Yeah. It was part because, uh, you know, uh, they're having some issues. This is the Pan America. They're having some issues with the supply lines. Yeah. So I never got uh, the, the bags, the side bags. Right. I just couldn't find a way of yeah. getting everything I needed, you know? So I was like, well, since I have to bring the car, might as well make it nice. Bring the rooftop tent and everything, so. Absolutely, man. So your back wheel then, it's, it stays on the ground then, right? It rolls yeah. with the bike. Just put it in neutral, make sure make sure the chain is loose, or uh, release the chain if you want. Is it solid? I mean, is it? Is there any wiggle on it? What about oh, the front? Does the front... Actually, look at it. So these are brand new tires. Yeah. And you see, you can still can see the green line painted on top. Yeah. And both of the, you know, obviously the front, but also in the back. So yeah, because it's, it's, really it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a driven wheel, so it's just rolling. Yeah, yeah it's just rolling, yeah. Yeah. And it's not even rolling the whole bike because, you know, part of it, not 50%, but like, yeah. part of it is like, you know, all by the... Yeah, yeah. Man, that is cool rig. You are living the life, man. Well, last night, got down to about 58 and had a couple other guys join us, Jeff and Jeff. And got up this morning, drank some coffee, and now I'm going to head out for the day. Went up there on top, visited with some folks, met uh, Oscar. Uh, that has the Porsche and the Pan America, and I messed uh, Crash Test Annie and uh, Montana Medic Mike, I believe. And they're telling me about Sinks Canyon up in Landers, that's where they're from, that I could have gone up on top of that hill and found another campsite. It's about 30 miles back in there on a good Forest Service road. So, anyway, so every day before I leave, I uh, bring my tent poles down. And uh, so I don't have a, so that way it just doesn't catch wind if a storm blows through. And um, I'm gonna go up here and grab some breakfast. And just, uh, we're gonna have the Pan America and then also the uh, the GSAs are up here. So test ride those and probably go up to uh, see Wild Bill Hitchcock, Hithcock, graveside up in Deadwood. So so we can find out to do today. Straight from the chip, venture bikes everywhere. Pretty cool. 
sharing stories, meeting folks, a lot of fun. The ride up from Sturgis to uh, Deadwood's really pretty. And this is coming into the city of Deadwood on 14 or 85, I think. Yeah. And there's a HBO series called Deadwood in the early days. But it's a fun little town, a lot of casinos. But I noticed that 85 is being resurfaced. So I assume it'll be open in time for Sturgis. Yeah, it's gonna be some nice tarmac, really nice. You know, back in the day, people that lived here were part billy goat. I mean, these are some steep hills. We're making our way to Wild Bill's uh, grave site, Mount Moriah Cemetery. And you can Google Maps, say, hey, Wild Bill Hickok Cemetery or grave, and it'll, it'll pull right up. But yeah, not too many soccer players come from these towns because you kick your soccer ball down the street, you got a mile to go to get it. Yeah, just look at this. Go right up there. Billy Goat, I tell you, they're part Billy Goat. And then we park here. We got to walk up yonder. Well, Budweiser Bud and I are doing a little Spearfish Canyon. Yeah, the cars are much worse than the motorcycles. So let's take a leisurely stroll down Spearfish Canyon. Beautiful. About 80 degrees. Cars, few cars let us go by. So now we're gonna have a little bit of fun. Two deer right there. A little spike buck and a little doe looks like. Well, the Brazilla ADD Fest was a uh, Brazilla ADV Fest was a lot of fun. There's some more, a couple more deer right up there. And met some new friends, uh, hung out, camp, rode motorcycles. Uh, just an overall very good time. So it's about uh, seven o'clock local time. And I'm heading back south to Dallas, Fort Worth Metroplex. Let's see what today brings. It was only 11 or 12 of us, only 12 of us. But Billy Conniger finished ahead of me. Um, and there was one other, uh, no, he was the only iron butt rally finisher ahead of me. And then the rest of them, I did finish, beat a couple of iron butt rally finishers. Wow, that's really something. Been sitting there thinking about Raymond noodles and chickens for the last, uh, 60 miles and I went through all my stuff. There's no Raymond noodles in there. I have a freeze-dried meal. But right across the park is a little Dollar General. So I'm gonna go over there and get some Raymond noodles. Dollar General across the street. Did not disappoint. Got a package of uh, got the water boiling. I'm gonna add some noodles. There we go, good enough. Take the hot water, pour it in here. Put some more seasoning on it. There we go. Take a can of chicken. I'm outside of Thedford, Nebraska. And uh, it's about, uh, I don't know, 1 30 in the afternoon. I started this journey from Sturgis at about 6 this morning, so local time. 
which was probably seven o'clock standard time. Take the chicken, I'm gonna pour it in there. So now I'm gonna take some hot water. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my steak seasoning, sprinkle it in there. And I may have to put this on the burner for a little bit. Kind of like chicken noodle soup when you get done with it. My Sawyer Mini to uh, filter the water because it looked kind of nasty. Boy, it's good. Really good. Best lunch you can have on the road. That way you get to stay outside in nature. You don't have to go to a restaurant, which is kind of a hassle. And, uh, you know, get a good meal, ramen noodles and chicken. And just like I do it, you know, when I cook supper at night, I'm going to uh, wipe it all down, kill all the cooties off of it. And that's basically how you keep from getting dysentery on a motorcycle trip. Wet wipes, that's the key. Most importantly, always make sure that you clean up all your trash. Leave no trace behind. right here well, I did about uh, 700 miles today and uh, I'm at a lake just about 20 miles south of Superior Kansas and uh, look at that isn't that slick so I got some good trees a little water view got a uh, subway sandwich so let's see if I can get a good night's sleep Subway. There's some deers. Got a nice. Oh, look at that little baby. Look at the babies. <laughs> Good camp out last night at a lake in uh, Kansas. I think it's called Cottonwood Lake, maybe. Not for sure. And uh, 58 degrees this morning. Just perfect. Had some coffee and a breakfast bar. And ready to roll about eight hours from home, so. Well, 2,500 miles, one or two rain showers, and I'm about uh, 50 miles from home, and got a, a toad choker. So, uh, shouldn't be too much harm if I get to it. Overall, great trip. <laughs>